I'm realizing I never put a bow on it. The last injury, okay, actually two, two injuries ago. Somebody uh, reminded me on Strava, they simply asked me, Seth, how did you get over your proximal hamstring tendinopathy, all right, PHT, also called that, uh, and I said, wow, I actually don't think I made a vlog about that. How did I actually defeat it? And so I'm gonna go, I'm off to the gym right now, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did at the house when I come back, but also in the gym as far as how I officially knocked it out. And I'll always say, talk to your doctor, talk to your physical therapist, all right? I'm just communicating what worked for me, not saying it'll work for you, but I didn't realize that tendons like work. Tendons connect muscles to bones, huh? Did you know that? And so it's the hamstring, it's all, those hamstring muscles on the backside of your leg, they need to, they're, they're, they're putting in work, but they need to connect somewhere, uh, somehow, to your sit bone, all right? So you're sit, so a lot of times, and this was my case, the most painful part of PHT, proximal hamstring tendinopathy, was sitting. It was, it wasn't a knife, but it was a butter knife. I will say it was, it was not, it was not pleasant. Uh, running was okay. Uh, it was probably like a five or six on the pain scale when it was at its worst. Sitting, it was, a, I almost couldn't sit. I would say it was about an eight on the pain scale. So that's when I knew, okay, I gotta go see a professional and that's what I did. And that's what I learned, what I'm about to show you in the gym, but also back at the house uh, to knock it out. And just so there's no confusion, all right, so tendons connect, as I, as I mentioned, uh, muscle to bone, ligaments, all right, a little different here, connect bone to bone, and fascia, this is fascinating, I actually, maybe I knew this, maybe not, fascia, which we think of, you know, plantar fasciitis, but fascia connects muscle to muscle, all right? And tendons are made up of what's called collagen. And we don't even think about this as runners, but what's incredible between the tendon muscle and bone, and it just happens because we do it so much as runners, when our leg is being pulled backward through that swing phase, all right, the leg's going behind us, and each step we're doing this, the hamstring muscle is contracting. But the hamstring muscle is not actually what's pulling on the bone. It's the tendon, okay? And sometimes we can get a little over, the, that tendon can get a little overworked and that's what can lead to this tendinopathy. And we're back from the gym, back from the run. Why do I share that with all of you? There's the run on your screen in the Zoom Fly Fives because there's hope. There's hope if you are injured. If you have PHT especially, that's what we're talking about today, you can overcome it. I was foreign to this injury six months ago. Didn't know about it, didn't know what it was, didn't know how to deal with it. And actually, before I forget, do not stretch it. It feels like a pulled muscle, almost, almost. And you're gonna be tempted to stretch it. That's what I did for about three to four weeks. I was like, what is this injury? It feels like my, I have a tight upper hamstring. It's not the hamstring muscle, it's the tendon. Maybe, maybe, again, seek out your medical professional advice. Uh, but I was stretching it. That was mistake number one, okay? Don't stretch it. What you need to do, and this is what I learned from the physical therapist, is you need to strengthen the muscles around the tendon, the hamstrings, and the glutes, the glute muscles, uh, because those are weak. That's what, I, that's what I have definitely discovered through this whole running injury is that those, those weak muscles, and it was my left leg, of course. My, I'm, I'm right leg dominant. My right leg is stronger than my left leg, so my left leg was doing too much work. I'll just say, probably getting ready for Rotterdam on the track, and then flying to Rotterdam, flying back, it all led to this, okay? And then it, 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 it's taken, it took me a long time to diagnose it, figure out what is the problem and how to deal with it. Now, at the PT office, physical therapy, we did dry needling. I think that helped, okay? To help stimulate the, the beginning of the healing process. And then also, uh, we did this restrictive blood flow leg curls with two and a half pound weights on my left ankle. So I'd lay on my stomach and then do these leg curls 
and this thing would squeeze my leg and I would do like 30 seconds of reps, nice and slow, and then it would release. And it basically, again, it's restricted, it would help bring blood to that area uh, to help, again, stimulate the healing. I think that helped a lot, actually, okay? Now, I took eight to nine days off. I can't remember, it was like eight or nine days in June when I was like baffled. I, I couldn't figure out what is this injury, what's going on, and you, I, what I've learned since then is that you might not have to take time off. You might be able to train through it if you're taking care of yourself, meaning don't do speed work on the track, definitely any speed work. Don't run up and down steep mountains. All those things puts more pressure on the, on the uh, tendon that is connecting your uh, hamstring muscle to your sit bone. Okay, so don't do those things. Um, and then what eventually, okay, so now let's dive in. So remember, this is in June, sacrum stress fracture in July. I had to stop doing everything, physical therapy, going to the gym. I couldn't do anything. I was just hobbling around on crutches. So then it actually came back. Remember what I said earlier, tendons like work. They like to be, they like work, okay? They like to be, have force put into them. And so what happened is the PHT actually came back in August and early September before I was back in the gym. And let's jump into the gym. So here you go. This is where you turn your ears on. This is what actually knocked it out completely, okay? The leg curls, kneeling leg curls, here's the machine. It's a very controlled machine. Uh, you 10 pound weights, nothing crazy. This helped. It didn't knock it out, it helped, okay? So kneeling leg, because it's very controlled. This is what I started on. Because again, I really wanted to target my hamstring muscles, all right? In, at the same time, I was doing these leg curls with the, uh, the big medicine, the, not the medicine ball, but this big ball in the gym, you know, laying on your back. This helped as well. Did it knock it out? No, it did not. All right, you ready for it? Brrr, drum roll, the free motion hamstring machine. There it is on your screen, all right? You can use this machine uh, holding onto the bars or not holding on, so really just standing there. And eventually, so I had to start holding onto the bars. This guy, it, it's an amazing machine if you wanna target your hamstrings specifically, okay? So what I actually did over the last, what I've been doing over the last two to three months really, is I put my hand on my hamstring muscle and I feel the hamstring muscle and then I start lifting my leg up and then going eccentric, okay? So as you're dropping your leg down, making sure you're really feeling your hamstring muscle. And that's why I have my hand on the hamstring to feel the, the leg dropping down and that hamstring working. And, and one, one other point is making sure your knee is staying stable in, in one place, in one spot, okay? Because that's what really targets the hamstring muscles if your knee is not moving at all. And oh, it burns so bad. I'll also say I start with lightweight. So like one, one set of 10 reps at like 12 pounds. And then I'll bump it up to like 15 pounds and another 10 reps. And then by the, like the fourth set, I'll go like 25 or 30 pounds and just do three reps. And it's hard and it's painful, but again, tendons like to work. This machine, I believe, is what did it for me. This is what really targeted the hamstrings and stimulated, I'll use that word, the tendon. Um, now again, it might not work for you, but I'm just communicating again, what has worked for me. And this is all, so what's gonna happen if you go to a physical therapist, they're probably gonna tell you, well, I bet, I'll bet a lot of money. They're not, they will not send you to the, to the gym doing these exercises. They better not because it's probably, it's, it'll be too, too much too quickly. They're gonna ease you into it, but eventually you can start to introduce some of these exercises in the gym and now I'm doing deadlifting. I'm not saying I'm an expert at it, but I'm, I'm working on my form for the deadlifting in the gym. That is also helping. Okay, everyone, running injuries, proximal hamstring tendinopathy. This is a new tool in the running injury toolbox for me. I've never had this injury before. I'd never heard of it before six months ago. I'm excited to be able to communicate with all of you what worked, what didn't work, what it is, what does a tendon do? Hamstring to bone, and we march on, and we learn from our mistakes, uh, we learn from our weaknesses, and we get stronger in the process.
Question of the day. I hope I covered it well. Ah, oh, it's like there's so many thoughts going through my head. But question of the day, who has had PHT? What worked for you to knock it out? Who has had PHT? What worked for you to knock it out? I love you. We're in it together. I know it's painful. Just listen to your, P your PT, your doctor, and hopefully my little story here uh, gives you a little insight as to what worked and what didn't work. I love you. All right, we'll toss it to a vlog from six months ago when the PHT really popped up. Right there, right there, right there. Oh man, butter knife. But we overcome right there, right there, right there. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.